Hello everybody! How are you tonight? Welcome to our TOEFL Cambridge and IELTS certification classes. And my name is Drago and I'm officially a Cambridge examiner for the speaking part of the test. And this is Pandora. Say hi Pandora. Hi guys. Hello. So Pandora is always following our classes, alright? And just before we start the class, please, if you haven't subscribed yet, click on the link below and make sure you get all of our tips for grammar and vocabulary classes next time. What? So, guys, the topic of the day is going to be paramount. It's essential if you want to make your discourse more cohesive. We call it discourse markers. Again, discourse markers, which are basically conjunctions or sentences that work as a conjunction. So basically, they are used to link your ideas. And every time you link your ideas in a text, they have a different purpose. It could either be like focusing, contradicting what you just said, changing the subject, or showing one's attitude to what one is saying. So the reasons why you have to link your ideas is basically not to leave your sentence alone. Right? So, you want to make your discourse, your speech more cohesive. That's why it's so important, it's paramount, it's crucial to learn discourse markers, okay? There are 126 basic discourse markers and we won't have time, unfortunately. We won't have time to see all of them, but tonight I've picked the most important ones. So, I've picked the crucial ones that you should know. And we're going to see some examples, all right? I'm going to speak a little bit fast because there are many of them, but I hope you can watch this video twice and you're, you're going to eventually pick it up, all right? So let's start. Category number one, focusing and linking. So with, with, with reference to the last meeting, I believe it should be shorter. So when I say with reference to the last meeting, I mean about the last meeting in a more fancy way, all right? Basically, that's what it means. Second example. As far as I know, Anna is going to get fired. Basically, that's what I heard. I heard from the grapevine. There are rumors that Anna will get fired. So I say, as far as I know, to the best of my knowledge, as I heard. Okay? Next. As far as I'm concerned, people won't get pay raised this year. So as far as I'm concerned means, in my opinion, but bear in mind that when you use these course markers, you use the proper intonation in your voice. Because you don't want to sound fake, you don't want to sound silly. So I say, as far as I'm concerned, and not as far as I'm concerned like a robot, alright? So as far as I'm concerned, people will not get pay raised this year, alright? Next one. Regarding my English course, you can definitely learn a lot of new words and expressions and collocations and dependent prepositions. Right? In other words, about my English course, what you can do is blah, 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 blah. All right? So, as regards the TOEFL test, that's super difficult and you should study really hard before you even try that. Okay? And as for Cambridge certifications, those are the only permanent ones. Because all the other ones, you have to trash it after three years, such as TOEFL and IELTS certifications. So, after two years, you have to trash TOEFL and IELTS certifications, but not Cambridge. Cambridge is a permanent one, right? So that was the first topic of the day, focusing and linking. Right, Pandora? Kiss. So sweet, isn't it? All right, so the second topic, balancing contrasting points. So first, you're going to see the difference between while, whilst, and whereas, all right? So basically, Whilst could very easily replace while and whereas in any situation. However, while and whereas have different purposes. While is used when two things are happening exactly at the same time. So I can tell you, like, while I was taking a shower, my phone rang. So two things happened exactly at the same time. And whereas, basically, I'm using to compare two different tastes or two different ideas. For instance, whereas I prefer Italian restaurants, my wife prefers Indian ones, you know? So I'm comparing and contrasting tastes in this case. 
I'm not saying that's exactly at the same time because time doesn't matter in this subject, all right? Now, the other one, on the other hand, so I can tell you, like, Rodrigo is sometimes very impatient. On the other hand, he always helps his student because he's willing to help. So you're showing two contrasting points and you're balancing those points. So you're showing a negative and a positive of each. All right? Excellent. So let's move to topic number three, emphasizing a contrast. So this time I'm giving emphasis to contrast. All right, Pandora? Yes, Daddy. So there are many ways you can give emphasis to contrast. We can use the words, however, nevertheless, nonetheless, all the same, mind you, although, though, in spite of. Basically, they are all synonyms. They are all acquainted with each other. They are familiar to each other, all right? So in Portuguese language, when we use however, nevertheless, nonetheless, all the same, we are saying basically, porém, todavia, entretanto, uh, contudo, they are all from the same family, right? Like, uh, usually we use those discourse markers after periods and before commas. So I say, uh, Maria is a great maid. However, she's sometimes late for work. So although she's a great maid, she arrives late. So I'm showing two contrasting points. You see? So I can say exactly the same sentence by using nevertheless, nonetheless, but bear in mind that in speech, when you're talking, it's very common to use but together with nevertheless and nonetheless. So I can say, but nevertheless, but nonetheless, it's more commonly used than just nevertheless, nonetheless, because those words are quite formal, so you, we, we'd rather use them in writing, you understand? So, but they're, they're easy, they're not difficult. I can say, um, I haven't got a lot of money. Mind you, I'm still saving money from exchange program. So I'm showing a contrast. I haven't got much money, but I haven't given up on my exchange program. That's what I'm trying to tell you, okay? Although and though, they're used in the beginning of the sentence, the middle of the sentence. However, when though is an adverb, or it works as an adverb, it goes to the end of the sentence. For example, I'm not rich. I'm going to Dubai on vacation though. So that though in the end works as an adverb and not as a discourse marker. Okay, just to make it clear for you. Now let's see number four. Concession and counter argument. So there are times you need to concede, there are times you need to counter argument. Alright, Yes, Daddy. So you got the five there. So, you can mix them up. So you can say, it's true that the president's concerned about coronavirus at the moment. Even so, he's not investing enough in these kinds of technology. So basically what I'm saying is, I'm giving a positive about the president, and at the same time, I'm giving a negative point, you know? So, it's true that he's concerned about something, even so, he's not investing enough money in technology. So I'm showing you a positive and negative. That's why I mix the concession and counter argument in the same sentence. All right? Uh, certainly, Rodrigo is a brilliant student. All the same, sometimes he misses some classes. So he's a brilliant student. Although he's a brilliant student, sometimes he misses classes. So again, I'm showing contrasting Okay? And I can even use this stress do, when do means really. I do believe that he is a great governor. All the same, what he's doing right now is not accepted by the majority of the population. When I say I do believe, I mean I really believe. Alright? Excellent. Now, number five, contradicting. So, I can say, on the contrary, or conversely, to show huge contrast, colossal contrast. So, I can tell you, I thought she was a millionaire. On the contrary, she hasn't got a penny on the bank. 
So this time, I'm showing you a great contrast, a colossal contrast, okay? I can say exactly the same thing by the usage of conversely, because they have exactly the same meaning, all right? So I can say, um, like, John is a very clever guy. Conversely, he hasn't passed on any job interviews. Basically, because he's got the hard skills, but he hasn't got soft skills. So, technically speaking, John is brilliant. He's a, he has a bright mind. But when he talks to people, sometimes we think that he doesn't have people with skills and he's not going to get a job, all right? So we can say conversely, so we are showing the other side of the story, all right? So, instead of staying at home, I decided to go to the beach. So, instead of staying at home, I decided to go to the beach. I can say pretty much the same, same thing by the usage of in lieu of. In lieu of is a little bit more formal. But when you say in lieu of, that is an exchange. Somebody is gaining something with that. So I can tell you, in lieu of getting paid for my classes, I decided that I want to receive Spanish classes from the other teacher. So we are exchanging something here. I'm gaining something, which is not money, but I'm gaining other classes or knowledge, you know, anything. So in this case, we use in lieu of. It's, it's an expression that comes from French language, you know, but it's very commonly used in English as well. Number six. Dismissal of previous scores. So basically, when you want to drop what you're saying and start a new thing, you can say, anyway, anyhow, at any rate, do you know what I mean? So I can tell you, like, um, I don't like that job. Anyhow, I've got to finish it. So even though I don't like that job, I have to finish it. Okay? Um, I haven't got much money. Anyway, I wanted to spend the weekend in my house, so I wouldn't go out anyway, you know? So, I'm dismissing the fact that uh, what I said previously. So, every time you say anyway, anyhow, at any rate, you basically dismiss what you're saying and you change it, okay? Now, if you want to completely change the subject, like with a, a whole new story, so you say in English, a whole new ball game. You have to use the expressions, by the way, incidentally, and now. By the way, and incidentally are pretty much the same. So I can tell you, oh, I went to the supermarket yesterday, and the supermarket was very crowded. By the way, I met your husband there, and he asked me to say hi to you. So when I say, by the way, I met your husband, the husband wasn't part of the story previously, so that's a whole new subject. So in this case, I changed completely completely subject, all right? And I can, I can do the same thing by using incidentally, okay? So, I can tell you, um, last month I went to a cruise ship in Caribbean, and during my trip, I decided to try some new margaritas and some new drinks that we cannot find easily in Brazil. Incidentally, your cousin was there and she told me she wants to study English with me. So in this case, studying English has nothing to do with my trip to the Caribbean. You know, those are completely different subjects. And in order to change it, I needed to use a conjunction which is called incidentally, alright? A propositive, incidentally. And I can do the same thing with now. So before I used to think that way, now I think differently, okay? Next one, number eight, is structuring. So every time you structure your essays or you structure your articles or even your speech, you have to say first, second, third, and finally. Or firstly, secondly, next, and finally. Okay? So I say to start with, the meeting is supposed to be short. It shouldn't take more than 10 minutes. Firstly, uh, we're going to discuss costs. Secondly, we're going to discuss sales. And finally, I want to hear your opinions on what is the, the right follow-up or the proper follow-up for that meeting, okay? So I'm structuring my text, I'm structuring my speech. So basically that's very easy, very commonly used in all articles, proposals, essays, reports, speeches.
things, all right? Very easy. Number nine, adding information. So those uh, additives, they could be more formal or more informal, and that is called a register in English. If the register is informal, it means you're using formal words to add a piece of information. If the register is formal, it means that the degree of formality is very high. So we are not supposed to mix formal and informal in the same speech because that would sound weird. It's like using slang and very formal Latin words in the same speech. It just sounds weird, so we shouldn't, we shouldn't do that, all right? So, uh, let me give you some examples. Like, yesterday when I woke up, I was already very tired. In addition, I had to press all my clothes because none of them were pressed. Moreover, I had a meeting with my boss and I was a bit late, I was running late for the meeting. Furthermore, my boss went bananas when he found out that I had forgotten my folder at home. Also, he told me he wanted to talk to me in his room after the meeting and on top of that, I lost my job, so he fired me. So basically, I'm building my speech by adding pieces of information. So I'm adding, adding, adding. So amongst all of them, moreover is certainly the most formal one. So moreover is very formal. In addition, it's neutral. Furthermore, it's neutral. Also neutral. On top of that, it's informal. Another thing is, it's kind of neutral. And besides, it's neutral or informal, so you can use in every speech. Okay. So amongst all those words, moreover is the most formal. Please bear in mind that when you're adding piece of information, you cannot use formal discourse markers for simple piece of information. So you say in English, I had a dog and a cat. Please don't tell me I had a dog, furthermore a cat. That's completely off, all right? So you had a dog and a cat. In order to use not over or furthermore, you have to tell me a story, you have to tell me what happened. And then after the happenings, after the goings on, then you add a new piece of information, all right? Next, number 10, generalizing. So I can say, on the whole, the party was amazing. So basically, in general, the party was amazing, all right? Broadly speaking, the music was great, but the food wasn't so delicious, right? Broadly speaking, it's the same as in general, right? But it's more informal, so you eat with your friends, with your mates. Um, to a great extent, the meeting was very productive. And in most cases, people prefer staying at home on Sundays, all right? So I'm generalizing here. So I'm not using any specificities. I'm just generalizing what I'm trying to tell you, all right? Number 11, logical consequences. That's what happens in the end of your speech, in the end of the text. So I can say, therefore, thus, hence, henceforth, and as a result. For example, uh, Brazilian's economy is a bit sluggish this year. Therefore, people aren't buying enough because people haven't got money. That's why they aren't buying enough. So that's a logical consequence, all right? I can say that it's very hot here, thus, I should just open the window <laughs> so I can stop spraying from uh, being closed, you know, it's really close here. Uh, the president isn't very good, hence, a lot of people have complaints against him, okay? So it's a logical consequence. Henceforth is special because it means you're going to change your attitude compared to the past. So before you used to do something, but now you're going to do something differently. For example, I've always smoked in my life. Henceforth, I won't smoke any longer. So from now on, from today forward, I won't smoke any longer. And that's what henceforth means. From now on, alright? And as a result, the same as therefore. Like, um, I've gossiped about my boss and as a result, I've got fired. That's very common in big companies. If you gossip, that's super negative and sometimes you can get fired, all right? Excellent. Number 12, let's try to soften our situation. So we're softening our sentences. So if somebody asks me, Rodrigo, can you please lend me 100 eyes? I'm going to say, I'm afraid I haven't got it. So instead of saying no, 
it's very cold, very blunt, I just say, I'm afraid I haven't got it with me. I mean, I'm afraid I only carry my credit card with me. So I'm softening the situation because I don't want to see in people's face just, no, that's blunt, you know? Um, I suppose I could, but uh, perhaps I should talk to my wife first, you know? I'm trying to escape from the situation. I'm trying to deviate the subject. So at least you try to do something, but I don't think you're quite there yet, right? In this case, you're softening all situations. Excellent. Topic number 13, which is showing one's attitude, what one's saying. So you can say, frankly, John, I can't believe you did that again. You know, when you say frankly, it's like, you just can't believe, you couldn't, you know, you could get over it, you know. In your mind, things should have been differently. So you say, honestly, I won't cope with that bullshit anymore. Sorry, my French. Pardon my French. All right? No doubt Rodrigo is being a little bit precautious this time. I think that things should be differently. Okay? And incontrovertible is the very formal word for no doubt. Okay? Incontrovertibly, that was the weirdest trip of my life. So it means there is no doubt that it was the weirdest trip of my life. So that's quite formal discourse, Mark. All right. Number fourteen. When I'm referring to other person's expectations, so you can say like, um, I agree with you, Murillo. In fact, I was gonna say that everything you said matches or suits what I think. Okay. Actually, you got a point. So I'm agreeing with you. I'm referring to your expectations and you get happy, all right? As a matter of fact, yes, I do agree with you, you know? To tell you the truth, I believe that you got a point there and I believe you should present that in the meeting, you know? So again, I'm agreeing and I'm referring to what somebody else is expecting me to say. It's amazing. And the last topic of the day is to sum up. So, in the end of my uh, essays or end of my articles, end of my texts, I can just say, in conclusion, to sum up, in a nutshell, it's very common, in short, briefly, so I say, in a nutshell, we decided to have our vacations right now and compensate for that or make up for that in the end of the year, you know? just because of COVID-19, so nobody can work, so we cannot have close contact. So in a nutshell, the decision was that we are all in general vacations and we're going to make it up next uh, semester, all right? So in conclusion, I believe the class was amazing. Yeah, it's very modest. So anyway, guys, thank you so much for, for having watched this class. I hope you're with me in the next tips classes because uh, every week I prepare something new in terms of vocabulary, I prepare something new in terms of grammar. Sometimes I teach very advanced grammar, it's very hard to, to, to put them all together. You know, sometimes we can't even find books with all the material that I teach here. So I try to create a compilation from different great book qualities because I'm nobody to create this method. So basically what I did, I consulted with Cambridge, I consulted with Oxford, all the best books, and I tried to make sure that like, all my students are motivated and eager to pass a top of Cambridge and IELTS certification class. So thank you so much for being with me. Cheers, have a great night. Cheers.